Hey guys, welcome back to a new episode of the Coach's Corner. I hope you all missed us after the week away. How is everyone? Good. We're good. It's getting squishy on the couch. <laughs> um, Lenka, welcome back. Thank you. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Not sure if anyone's missed you. I missed you. Oh, <laughs> I missed you, Lenka. Thanks, look, I missed you too. <laughs> um, you should track all vegetables. Um, there is no vegetable that doesn't need to be tracked. Um, if you want to be um, spot on with your food, you definitely have to track everything you eat. Everything that goes in your mouth. Yeah, exactly. To a degree, I think how anal you want to be, though, as well. I think, like, depends on what the actual outcome is, I think. Um, if you want to be 100% accurate, then track yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. But I don't think, I think if you want to kind of get a ballpark figure, I wouldn't recommend tracking everything. I guess it's, it depends. Yeah. You like mean like every something answer. like, you know, green beans or something like that, because yeah. you want to track your, like, potatoes, <laughs> potatoes, pumpkins, because yeah. they're quite calorie dense. Yeah. So they're going to add to your carbohydrate mm. intake. But maybe something yeah, like lettuce. That doesn't like if you're, yeah, you're, if you're eating more intuitively, yeah. then like salads and green beans and broccoli. Yeah. Like you, Stuff that's, that's not calorie dense. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think yes, but I think also to a degree it depends. Yeah. Well, it's a good way to help keep your shoulders in a safer position. You're not internally rotating your hip arch back like that. And also for Pal, this is like Linda. You'll see she's very arched. And Zach. And Zach. Sorry? <laughs> oh, <laughs> how cool. Yeah. 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 They arch to reduce the range of motion. And yes. Because right. when it comes to a meet, the, the one who lifts the most weight wins. Regardless, like, as long as you're in the rules. And it places um, the shoulders at a better position than just a flat back. And you're able to retract the scapula, pull the shoulder blades back even more. Um, and you essentially, like, less range of motion, more weight, more volume, and it's going to develop. And it's, yeah, a, as well. it's a good way to build up a lot of tension too. Yes. So, especially you end up stabilising yourself on the bench even more. And yeah. if you can use chalk, then do that as well. Yeah. yeah. Like Ash always says, tighter body is a stronger body. Is that what you say? There you go. Yeah. So and it doesn't have to be like a massive arch. Like you see, just it'll be along the spectrum as, as, as much of an arch as you can get, as tight as you can get. That's, you'll build up a lot of tension. You'll be able to exert more force that way. So it's kind of three main reasons why. Yeah. And if you're not arching, are you really benching? <laughs> <laughs> so probably something really dense in calories and carbohydrates, mostly because um, you like you need carbs to function properly. It's the body's main fuel source, carbohydrates, and something dense in carbohydrates, something even with a bit of sugar would be fine. But you know, something like pasta or rice or even a little bit of protein to go with that, maybe a bit of, of meat, something like that. Yeah. Give you some energy to feel yeah, pretty much. Yeah. What is everyone eating before a workout? What's your go-to? Fruit. White rice. Me too. Banana. Yeah. I'm going chocolate. It was sour. <laughs> it was sour words. Yeah. <laughs> what is on special? <laughs> yeah. The dollar chocolate bars. That's what I'm going. Which I'm having. Dollar tails. <laughs> I'm a Woolies man. You just go in and you look at the yellow labels. Like what's yeah. on sale? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As long as you can um, obviously stomach that before. I know people that can't eat before they train, just yeah. make sure you can kind of. Yeah. To try and have it, like, that now and it so you can digest it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's also, um, it depends. Like, if I have something an hour before a session, it's um, too early <coughs> for me. It doesn't give me too much. I need to have it probably about half an hour before I start training. <laughs> Yeah, so with um, obviously dieting and being a calorie deficit, a, the normal response is for you to be hungry. Um, that's just the normal physiological response. So you've got to be like, okay, I'm going to be hungry. And then you can be like, what strategies could I put in place to kind of reduce hunger? Because you are going to be hungry if you're in a calorie deficit. Yeah. Um, and I personally think there's a few things you could do. So for example, making sure you're eating enough protein. That's a big one. Making sure you're not wasting your calories in terms of like, a, a thousand calories of McDonald's versus a thousand calories of fruit, vegetables, whole food with fibre, that's going to be a lot different and the two will keep you full. Like, uh, well, McDonald's probably won't, whereas the vegetables, everything that will keep you full. 
Um, hydration is probably a big one, just drinking before, um, even before a meal. Um, and some people get confused with um, thirst with hunger. So your body will think you're hungry, but you actually could be thirsty. Um, caffeine's a good one, I think. Yeah. Fiber. Yeah, fiber, which is from your, probably your fruits yeah. and vegetables. All the ones that are like less calories that'll fill you up. Yeah. Um, even meal timing, I know a lot of us probably eat at different stages in the day. Like, Ash, you don't like eating in the morning. If you're trying to diet and you just eat all your food in the morning, you get really hungry at night, this is probably not going to make a strategy. So you can kind of reduce the window and have maybe have three meals throughout the day and not really just always frequently eating because you're not actually filling yourself up either. Um, <coughs> probably a couple yeah, things. Okay to be a bit yeah, know that it's okay. Yeah, that's the main thing. That's, yeah, that's, that's what's going to happen when you're. I think that water, like you said, was, is really important. Like trying to aim for about three to four liters a day. Yeah, that will help. And if you can as well drink that um, before a meal, like a, a, a glass or two glasses before a meal, that's going to help you um, with how you're feeling after your meal too. I think making sure that you chew food properly. Yeah, that's yeah. Really, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. really important. Even not even chew. Even just like know that you're actually eating. Like if you're just watching TV, just yeah. like be focused. Like, yeah. yeah, be focused on the yeah. food. Like, yeah. Yeah. like yeah, exactly. Yeah. Be focused on the food as well, but keep yourself busy as well. If you're bored at home, yeah, you just you just want to eat as well. Yeah, yeah. busy and everything. Yeah, and stop following all the food yeah. profiles on Instagram, <laughs> <laughs> food porn, the burger pages. That's all it can I think the main thing is, as we said, don't waste your calories. Yeah, mm. and even like liquid calories. If you're just drinking like cans of Coke and like. I don't know, having like juices. chocolate milk and <laughs> juices. juices. Like you're not you're not gonna be full from that. Like it's not yeah. gonna fill you up and then you've just blown how many calories it's through like liquid carbs, calories. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, I'm hungry but I've got no calories left and even milk and coffee or sugary coffee. Yeah. Those things can all add up and make a difference yeah. and yeah. try and get eat them. Yeah. Eat food, not eat coffee. <laughs> 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 <Just> eat it. <laughs> <laughs> eat whole foods and real foods rather than rather than things that are boxed or packaged or something. You eat as much whole yeah. food as you can that are nutrient dense. You know, then your body won't be craving things. Because I think a lot of time when people get hungry, they'll go to snack and they'll think, oh, I'll just grab this bar or something. But a lot of that's just really refined and it's like just sugars that turn you know spikes in insulin really quick and then you'll need to eat again later. So yeah. you go for more real foods, nutrient dense, then mm. probably help. Some yeah. strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> They're cheap, yeah. <laughs> and low in yeah. calories. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've been told to brace when doing certain ex exercises. What does bracing actually do? There's so many muscles that actually act on the spine, and when you when you look at it, it's actually all around. So it's not just people just seeing like rectus abdominis. It's actually when you're bracing, it's actually like a 360 expand to all the stabilizing muscles. It's like a belt. The diaphragm. Yeah. So yeah. The diaphragm, Yeah. All like all those muscles, you need to like switch your yeah. yeah. And like what people say is breathing to your belly, or well, it's breathing into your diaphragm really. So. The way to explain, I explain it to my clients is like the diaphragm is like a dome shape, but when you breathe in, the diaphragm flattens. And then what it does, it pushes down everything, like all the organs and the abdominal areas, and it creates pressure, which then that pressure stabilizes around the spine. So I think that should be used for probably more high stress lifts. So for example, squats, deadlifts, whereas with like low, low stress stuff, whereas like, like maybe like a bro or something like that, you probably shouldn't be bracing in that aspect. It's more probably, um, like breathing in, breathing out, and exertion and stuff like that. Stability through spine. Stability, yeah. yeah and you're um, yeah. between your pelvis and thoracic. Yeah. So the amount of injuries that get reduced by properly bracing, yeah. the injury, um, the risk of it just goes down a lot. And you'll find that you'll probably be able to push it out a bit more weight too. You, and even with a belt, that enhances the intra abdominal pressure even more. You say someone could deadlift 200 kilos by doing bracing without a belt, they could probably even get 210, 220 with a belt as it enhances a bit more. But um, the risk of injury goes down a lot and you'll probably be able to lift more weight as well. What did I say, Steve? What was my saying? Tighter bodies, stronger body. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. 
Um, if you guys have any other questions for our next week's episode, then make sure you shoot them through to our Facebook or Instagram page. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Bye.